Okay, welcome to game one between RDS and Raptors in the Attic of the Saskatchewan League on February 5th. I have Dunk Daly with me again here today. Well, hello. Oh, that, was, that was just my entrance. Sorry. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Entrances don't need to be special. Just uh, say hello. Go ahead and uh, pick some bands here. Ziggs. Still one of those pretty much perma bands unless you actually want them. Yeah, that's, I don't know, it's just a given band for pretty much any team now. Yeah, and that Fizz over on Raptors Addicts, definitely a targeted ban on to Kawhi there. Yeah. Love is that 80 Fizz tough. I don't really, I don't really understand why you would want to do that, but it's been getting bans, so. Man, think about it. Just, like, reapply the W all the time, doing lots of damage while doing it. I don't know. It's, it's a pinch. It's, yeah. I, it does hit uh, the regen tanks top lane pretty hard, so. Yeah, like, it's pretty it's pretty good against, like, Mundo, Shyvana. Well, no. Well, Shyvana will probably just kill. Yeah. And uh, Wukong banned out by RDS, and Karma banned out by Raptors and Yetics. Karma is definitely for Luke Duke there. Luke Duke plays a lot of Karma. Yeah, he's been giving Karma a lot. He's played really well, and it, I don't know, it just keeps on getting through. Yeah, it's another thing. I don't really have a problem with Karma. He can harass me all want, all she wants in lane. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that strong of a pick at all. The, the Wukong, I don't know. That That's also like, that's coming back into a new meta, and you really see a lot of like AoE heavy comps. Or it, was, it was super assassin based towards the end of season three, so yeah, I don't, sure. know. I don't know. I think Wukong definitely fits more in if a team wants to run with a Yasuo, because that's like an yeah. easy five man knockout. Yeah, that's definitely like it's just a counter to having to ban the Yasuo sometimes, because that is like a really huge benefactor to it. But even like Ziggs, if you think about it. If he knocks him up with the W, boom. That's a yeah, so target. Because it is a displacement, so. Exactly, and Thrush being picked up here for RDS. I think we need to get a little bit more hype about the Tark band. <laughs> the Tark that's, band? That's what I'm all about. That's where it's at. Right, oh, just straight out focusing Galron on that one. I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't think Tark's that strong in the bot lane. These. Play they just two definitely play pretty obscure supports, in my opinion. Just gotta stick to the Trinity. And think about how Annie came into play. That was just like, wow, she has good support abilities. Yeah, but Tark, <laughs> Tark and Karma are already supports, and they're just oh, I don't know, they're man. mediocre. Tark, Tark is a god jungler and a god top lane. <laughs> he has so much survivability. It's awesome. Yeah, so Either way, it's a pretty cool band. Uh, Leon and Nautilus being picked up, then that's pretty cool. A yeah. Nautilus jungle pick is really, really interesting. Oh, and we might have a Teemo here copying uh, Cloud9. And Zach making a resurgence in the jungle, possibly. That's something I'd like to see. I don't even know why people stop playing it. Uh. I think he might have just gotten like a few uh, range nerfs, and that was really it. Maybe a few little AP nerfs hit here or there, but either way, he can just run over top of his blob, survive. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess they also nerfed the blobs a little bit because they go uh, further away from his body now, so. Maybe. Whenever he gets hit, that is. Not when, he, uh, not when he's killed. Yeah. But like also with him too, like you can combo that with a Yasuo so easy. Yeah. Two of his abilities do it. So. That's very true. And Vi and Draven getting picked up, and the Jinx insta locked on the side of Raptors in the attic. I don't know. I think that's a pretty ham pick for Jinx. Like to go into a Draven like that, that's pretty cocky. But at the same time. You can really outplay it with the Leona. Leona can easily keep you safe. Like, 
you can zone so hard with Leona, even against Thresh, like it doesn't really matter. Leona's tank stats are just out of the roof. Mm -hmm. And like, Jinx with anybody, any support that can lock somebody down long enough to get your flame chompers to proc is just the craziest lane. Oh yeah, definitely. And even with the Ari pickup, think about that. You can pull somebody right over the chompers. That's awesome. That's a really smart comp that they're pulling off there. The same with the Nautilus too. Yeah. And what I'd like to see out of Zero Invictus here would be Yasuo, seeing as they already have Vi. That's just a filthy combo in the mid lane with free kills all day. Yeah, but how much, how many AP tops does Kawhi Gun play? Not very many, that's, and I think that's yeah, the problem. He, he does play AD Fizz, but that's the thing, it's AD Fizz, it's not AP Fizz. Totally different play style if you think about it. Mm -hmm. And they do have that. Oriana Renekton. Ori, still good with Vi, as long as he doesn't get too far away. Uh, even with Renekton, he can just dive right in there with mm -hmm. slice and dice. To see what Red and the Addis pick up for their top lane. Mundo and Shiva are both still up, so can only assume one of those two. Yep, probably just one of the tank gods. That's just what you gotta think about now. Be cool if we saw a Warwick. That'd be nice. A really single lockdown team, but oh yeah, for sure. If yeah. They, yeah, if they yeah. ran Warwick, they could destroy Draven and Ori so fast. Cause mm. Ari, because Ari yeah. pretty much she doesn't really care about her life too much because she needs to spear rush in anyways to get the extra yeah. damage. And then on top of Nautilus and Leona, you could just rush in and kill yeah, the two carries. They can really all in very easily, and I think that Fatboy Smoothie is really going to need to get a lot of picks. I think that's the way that this game's going to have to play out, at least for the early game. And then, well, then they're going to get chased down, definitely, because that is a really AoE heavy comp. Yeah. The only. I think the problem with Garen here is he's going to have a pretty hard time getting to the back line. He's either going to get flayed, stunned, he's going to get shockwaved, stand aside, something's going to happen to him and he won't be able to make it all the way to the back. Yeah, I kind of hope that it's a ghost pickup, but it doesn't look like he's going to be running ghosts. And he is. He does have barrier, which is very odd. Yeah. That's... Who knows? Who knows? Maybe that's going to be a secret to get into the back line. Maybe. That's, you never know. It's secret strats, man. A little bit of extra health is all you need. I suppose so. Oh. We did get Ignite. Oh. Yeah. Just barely switching over. And Luke Duke does have Ignite in the bot lane. I'm not sure if that was a good idea because Jinx can easily get massive amounts of attack speed. And no, I like that. I, I like that. Because if you think about it, the Draven can easily uh, damage the Jinx. If he really knows how to catch his axes and place himself, which we've seen Loon he he can do that. He's not, he's not a terrible AD player like half the people you see in Soul Q. He's, he's actually played some pretty good Draven. So, as long as he can kind of place himself right and get those free hits on her I don't think it's going to matter I think they can just like all in at level 3 I think that'd be a really good all in probably that is like the biggest benefit of Thresh like you hit your death sentence they're locked down for like one and a half seconds yep so that's like two free autos at least as long well, as Galron to... doesn't counter engage they're going to have to use the exhaust on Thresh if he's going to engage really hard or they're going to have to use it on the Draven and stop his damage. But Thresh can just save Draven. Even if they go in, he can just flay them away, run away, shield them. Not really a big deal. Yeah. The, I think the big thing would be an exhaust on Draven. Because then if he wants to go catch his axes, he would have a harder time, depending on where they land, based on his uh, movement. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. 
and in the mid lane. I don't know. I think this could go either way. Yeah, this is. I like this matchup. Either way, it's it's a really fun matchup for both of them, and but they both both get equal harassed down probably, and they'll both probably sustain the lane very well. So it's really gonna have to depend on the junglers to really gank and see where they can uh, take their mid laners. Yeah, if Lord Dog Nine could get some clutch hooks on the Zero Invictus. That lane's pretty much done. And the same yeah. thing for Fat Boy Smoothie. If he can land the Vault Breaker on a Pseudo Curse, that lane's pretty much over. Yeah. The one nice thing about the Nautilus Ari is that as soon as you get the hook, you can instantly get the charm as well. Whereas, like, with the Vi, you're only... Well, Vi Ori, that is. You're only going to get the... Uh, you're only going to get the W uh, slow damage. Or, sorry, slow. Yeah, that's... I think that's definitely something a lot of ranked fives teams and stuff need to put together more. The mid and jungle synergy. I feel like out of anywhere, the jungler should be camping mid lane harder than any lane. Definitely, definitely. Like, if your other lanes need help, that's... Of course, go help them, but... Mid is the lane that you really need to speed up. If you get the mid tower down, that gives you entire map control. Especially as a jungler, you can start warding their entire side, put pink wards wherever you want. It, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have full control of their jungle. And you can start to roam the dragon really well, a lot easier, and as well as bot lane if you haven't already taken it even. So it really just opens up a lot of map pressure, and that's all that you really want in the, well, in the current meta. Exactly. And even then, then you can start doing blue invades. Then you can start pressuring the other jungler to help win up that matchup. Yeah, it really just opens up a lot more potential for your team to like gain an advantage. Well, we'll have to see who does a better job. Honestly, I think both are capable. We'll just have to yeah, see. I'm, I think the jungle pass will be a big thing in it. Because if they both start on the same side, they're going to end up on the same spot when they go gank mid lane. So we'll have to see how that works out, how they coordinate with their mid laner. And well, we'll have to see if they both gank mid lane, that is. Yeah, that's true. Somebody could uh, lose lane pretty hard at the early levels and force force some jungle presence up there. Especially with a Garen versus Renekton, that's... Both of those are pretty heavy damage bruisers early game. Right, jumping into game here, we do have Raptors in the Attic on the purple side and RDS on the blue side. Raptors in the Attic, a little, a little slow out of the gate. It's definitely just something I want to see a lot more. A lot of level one pressure. Oh, still got chat on. No thanks. And Thresh went a Doran shield. That's, uh, I don't know, you usually see it the other way around. You usually see the Thresh getting the, uh, the Amulet, and you usually see the Leona getting the Dorns or uh, Targons. So that's really interesting that we see Leona's, Leona going Ancient Coin instead. Mm -hmm. Like, the Ancient Coin really on Thresh is only needed so that way you can continually hook and land. Cause if you don't get it, you miss two hooks. You're out of mana. You can't. You pretty much can't do it anymore. Yeah, you have to wait on your base regen. I mean, even if you have, like, you'll, you'll obviously have the uh, mana regen through support masteries. But do you have that on your room page? I don't know. Not many people do. So this kind of changes how changes how you're gonna have to play the lane. For sure. The only good thing about the Dorn's shield, if you do manage to land a hook, you're gonna win the trade. No doubt about it. You take yeah, harass, whatever. <laughs> Your health regen is just insane anyways. And Draven can even melt a Leona. This is a really nice part about bot lane. Oh my. Thresh gets the hook, and that Leona is... Yeah, Leona's gonna lose a lot of health. Especially starting ancient coin. Yeah. No extra health or defensive stats. So. 
see what they do here. Some early aggression top lane from Felipe. Charges at him. No big deal. Yeah, like you said, both junglers are going to be starting at the same well, same side of the map. And both of them actually doing wolves, but uh, Lord Dogman actually finishing his wolves first, starting on his red buff before our eyes on our blue. And we really just have to see who can get out of the jungle the quickest and see who can put enough pressure down and try and make something uh, change for the team. Zero Invictus does have a ward in that bush, but Pseudo Curse did ping it out, so when Lord Dogman does show up, he will know about that. I think he may just go top lane. Quite and Jin spinning at the Yeah, panel. they're both going top lane. They're going to meet up in this tri bush. Let's see what happens. Called it out. <laughs> Called it out. That was really actually gets all three hits. Oh, Death Sentence lands on Amethyst to the bot lane. Amethyst gets ignited. That last auto will be enough. First blood, it goes over to Loon Shu. Great. And like I said, that Draven, that's, that was what we were looking for in bot lane. Already 126 bonus gold from its passive. And that's, that's like the worst part about Draven. He gets like two, three kills in lane. It's like him getting five kills in lane. Just because of the passive. It's so I his other passive was stronger, yes. But this one's like just as strong. At yeah, least or at least early game. It can really get you ahead in game. And that's that's awesome. That's Fat boy backs out of that one. Yeah, and actually just looking at soft lane, uh, Renekton is putting down a lot of pressure on Garen right now, and that really makes it so, well, Garen can't really farm under tower well other than spin, and if he misses the last hit with spin against creeps and tower, that really puts him behind. Like we see here, he is 10 CS behind, which is a lot. That's a, that's a lot to lose in uh, four and a half minutes. Oh, for sure. Dogman coming up here for the gank. Does not get the root. Gets the hook, though. In the root. Well, Slow goes down. Won't be enough, however. But that will give Felipe his lane presence back. Unless that boy smoothly can do something to change that right here. And he does have ball breaker up. Lands it on the lower dogman. Felipe run maybe the wrong way here. Kwaiwan will go down to ignite. Flash used by Felipe to run away from that boy smoothly. They look to just straight up kill her here. Will the red buff be enough? No, it will not. I know. That was a really good turnaround, though. That was, they baited that out really well. Great death sentence by Luke Duke on Amethyst there. Almost getting the kill. Just not quite enough damage there. Ignite wasn't up. Just couldn't secure that one. But, but again, that, we're seeing the dream pressure. Yeah, pushes him out of lane. Can't, can't farm gank, get experience. Just overall, just winning the lane pretty hard right there. Yep. And up top, Lord Dogman did help Felipe push that in. Deny experience to Kawhi. It's not really the worst of all deals for Kawhi. Yeah, he's Sorry. already ahead in CS, so. Yeah, he's doing quite well in lane. Lucia's Draven mechanics are seem pretty strong just looking at him. I'm bad at Draven, so I can't really. Yeah, I'm bad at it too, but like, <laughs> he's already at 90 stacks. I yes. think that's pretty good at this point. Definitely. I mean, that's like. He is what? So that's like pretty much 45 minion kills and 45 catches. Yep. Lord Dogman coming down here, smites the cannon. Decides not to go in. Maybe it the is. best idea. He might have actually lost that 3v2. They just want to put some pressure down so Jinx can farm up a little bit and get some levels. And they're going to get it. They're just going to back off and bot lane and I believe Draven has a blood no, nah, he, he has has He has BF and long yeah. sword. If, or boots, depending on where he wants to go here. Yeah, he grabs the boots. So that bot lane will be very scary. Yeah, seven minute BF is awesome for Draven. That really throws him into a situation where it's nuke or get stunned out and probably die. Yeah. 
in the in this mid lane, the CS is pretty much the same. Yeah, it's it's a pretty equal lane. Oriana still hasn't used her uh, three health potions. Oh, she must have backed then. Oh no, sorry, two health potions. Two, just two. Okay. Yeah. Well, good thing for Super Curse though, after using those two health potions, can still farm and stay relevant in lane, so props yeah, to him so after getting uh, some early damage onto himself. Wonderful thing about having an Ariana team. She can just heal herself and you don't really have to have to worry about her safety. We see Kawhi Gun Jin actually roaming down the mid here. Actually wards up the yeah. Wraith Bush. He will be caught out here. Oh, gets the slice and dice. That'll end any sort of aggression right there. Oh, and Amethyst does get death sentence in the back lane. Flayed, but the box does go down. Link Shoot does have enough damage to catch his 334 goals bonus. And Luke Duke's picking up that one with Ignite. That's the power of Draven right there. And back to second the passive. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's just actually a really nice hook to come out. And it's all they need now. It's just a single hook, and they can do all their health in one combo. Oh, for sure. And this does look to be tower here. This first tower will be going over to RDS. I think. I think Fat Boy Smoothie probably should have been down there, just so that right after they kill the tower, they could have just gone and done dragon without any sort of aggression. Yeah, definitely. You always want to be able to keep dragon control, and especially with a nine-minute dragon, that would—that is not a bad time for your team to do dragon. Yeah, considering so. how big Loon Shoe is right now, that would be a fast, fast dragon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it does look like they're gonna go uh, for it now, maybe. Yeah. Things going out. Maybe they're just that boy's moving back and off the little dogman there. Well, they have it warded up now, so they know if when their team's going to be coming. Oh, hook does land on Lord Dogman. Oh, Fatboy Smoothie misses the smite and goes over to Lord Dogman. Does get nuked out. Felipe did die to in the top lane after getting tower dove. Luke Duke and does Luke take a lot of damage. Luke Shu didn't take the lantern. I think I think if Luke Shu would have taken the lantern, could have really helped the scene there. For sure, it didn't seem like Lin Shu was more scared than anything to go and help his team. Yeah, Zero Invictus still had full mana and pretty much full health, so it definitely would have swung the advantage to his team. Oh, the EQ out of Galron lands and on the hook, but Zero Invictus does manage to land the shockwave. Charm does go off from Sudokris, pick up that kill on Zero Invictus. And a that great was tough transfer. Yeah, this is that was a pretty big swing by. Yeah. Raptors in the attic right there. Picked up Dragon. Picked up mid lane kill. They will not be able to get this tower, I don't think. There's too much support coming up. They gained yeah. back 2,000 gold though. That's... I really pulled the, pulled them back into this. Dog man does go down to the Draven ult. And this will be a 3v3 in the mid lane for the tower. Most Hopefully. of the oh sorry go ahead. Most of the the alts are up for RDS, and Amethyst is still level five, so this could be a pretty easy dive if they manage to land a hook. But they're just backing off. Yeah, I mean if if they can focus on to uh, Lushu and really really get the AOEs to, or sorry the. Uh, Stuns and charm sound, that would be perfect. And that was a great CC combo coming out of Raptors in the Attic <laughs> onto Zero Invictus there. Didn't really not have a chance getting out of that one. Yeah, that is definitely all they need to do, especially once they get a lot more health and uh, definitely a lot more damage. Uh, can really put them into a situation where they can fight. But I really think Rogers in the Attic needs to send Amethyst back to the bot lane to get some levels. He's still only yeah. level 5. Yeah, they need to let him farm out and get his ultimate and just 
get some items. He's really far behind just because they've been trying to roam around with him. At this point, he is 60 CS down. So, that's huge at this point. That's one of the reasons there's still a huge gold differential. Even though the kills are equal, and there's one dragon on the side of Raptors in the attic. That was a really good dragon to see though. Think about it. From the mist smite. Oh, for sure. And Kawhi is just way too tanky for these two. He might actually be able to pick up a kill on either of them at this point. His ult is ending, but will the slice and dice be up? No, it won't. Oh, they're getting a catch on bot lane. Ooh, no, close. Galron looks to go in on Loon Shoe, but I don't think that's such a good idea without any sort of support, considering how far behind Amethyst is at this point. If Amethyst saves... If Amethyst saves mana for the ultimate, I think they could get the kill. Also, if Pseudocurse does swing down over there, that could definitely be enough nuke to kill the Draven. Oh, definitely. Pseudocurse really strong still, even with just uh, Chalice and two Dorns rings. Still 62 AP, that's all you really need to oh, kill yeah. a 1300 health Draven. Draven ult just missing there. That's some pretty good aggression over the wall by RDS there. Fat Boy and Zoo Invictus two manning this tower. That will go down while Kawhi pressures the red buff. Yeah, he's really giving them trouble in, well, for both the top and jungle. Yeah, and he did manage to get over the Baron wall. And Lin Shu and Luke Duke just still pushing out that bot lane. With the, the pressure everybody else on RDS is flying to the other side of the map, they can just do that quite easily. Great three-man shockwave on to the members of Retro's in the Attic, but Fatboy getting very low. Kawhi's ult is popped. So you're Invictus able to pick up that kill. So Invictus going for the blind orbit section of the wall does man go down for it. All in all, well that that did not quite work out for Raptors in the attic there. They lost four members and they only managed to get one. Yeah, and in bot lane, that was a really nice engage by Galron. He actually had Zenith blade right in. And got the stun onto uh, got the stun onto Luke Duke, and oh, he just melted. He just melted from the Jinx ult. But right after, Loon Shu just dove the tower, took the kill, and in the end, took the tower. Yeah, and that's not a sign you want to see. A 501 Draven at 15 minutes in the game. He's already That's got his bloodthirster. He's already got a static shift for even more burst. That's a very scary thing to see. He has both... He has enough physical and magical damage to take down pretty much anybody at this point in time. Yeah, Unless you are 5-0 as well. Yeah, Raptors in the attic at this point definitely need to look for a pick onto someone. Because the team fight on... RDS is just way too strong at this point. Yeah, and Lutu actually lands a hook onto Galron. No, Felipe coming up from the side. Zero Invictus does get ulted by Lord Dogman. It looks like they're going for that boy in lower. Zero Invictus does get nuked down. Loon Shoe and Luke Decker, all that remains. 2v5, will they be able to do it? Flash is coming out. The anchor just hitting the wall. Lunshu should click the lantern. Click the lantern. Oh, gets away. Everyone's I so low. Luke Duke wants it bad. One goes down. Two goes down. Three goes down. Will he be able to fight Amethyst? He does it. Quadra kill for Lunshu in the 2v4. Very well played. And that's what a Fed Raven does. He hit all those axes, too. That was. Meanwhile, Damn. Kawhi well goes and gets the top lane. That was that was pretty crazy. He just got so much gold. 
Yeah, that definitely puts the Draven way ahead in this game. And that all stemmed from a dragon that nobody even managed to get because they were all too busy chasing or defending themselves. That sounds like a rank 5 5 game. Yep, and there it goes over to RDS. At this point, I think all RDS needs to do let Draven back, pick up some items, pick up his last whisper, I'm pretty sure he can buy, yeah. And then just group mid. With the Draven being 901, he's so strong that you land a hook, you land a shockwave on like even one person, they're going to die very fast. Big time fight here. Lucio Did actually. You have the lockdown. The, yeah, the pick potential and the lockdown. But the great shockwave hitting two members. Jinx Super Mega Death Rocket picks up a kill and they will chase down in the mid lane. Hook goes down on the Amethyst. Gets nuked down by Zero Invictus. Amethyst may not be able to survive another QW combo from Zero Invictus. We'll have to see. Decides to keep chasing. Ooh, W just barely getting it. Lord Dogman tanking the hook. Luke Duke wants to go for the kill, can't get it. Amethyst doesn't walk into the wall, walks into the Oh, Kawhi alt flashes over the wall. Drops the ignite under Lord Dogman. Does get the stun, and Lord Dogman will be going down here. That was just another crazy fight. That was awesome. That was uh, just a really nice engage, actually, from Galron. And they got the really great lockdown onto the, onto the Draven, and... You disappeared. I, I, don't th I don't think you got more than two axes off in no, that fight. That's exactly what they need to do. Land the solar flare. Land either the anchor or the charm. And Loon Shoot should be dead by that point. But what the members of RDS need to do, they see the solar flare come out. They need to get in front of Loon Shoot. If they can block even one of those skill shot CC abilities, Lin Shi will be able to do work in that team fight. And before that fight, Lin Shi didn't have his last whisper, and now, now he has his last whisper, and now he's gonna really put the damage down. Luke Duke does land the hook over the wall. Garon definitely will be going down here. She's picking up some extra gold for his worries. Yeah, and so far on that passive, he has 1,274 gold earned. That's, that's a lot of gold. Wow, that's crazy. Kawhi does get hooked in. It just pops his ult at the last second. Oh, the Schmegger Death Rock does miss, but the Ignite should take him down. Fat Boy Smoothie going in on Amethyst. The Ignite does not kill Kawhi. Loon Shoot picking up a kill with his ult. Fat Boy and Luke Duke get another kill in the back lane onto Nautilus. The Flash Luke Flake. Duke. Yeah, that was what we were looking for. And uh, there is the surrender vote. Game 1 goes to RDS. Thank you for tuning in.